Hi everyone, welcome to the weekly class, Living Kabbalah. Uh, we are in a very special week. We actually finished the entire process of all the holidays, of all the days of connection. We completed the preparation of what Kabbalists say that we prepare our consciousness for the whole upcoming year. And uh, it's a very special time. We kind of, it's almost like we went through, um, the best way to understand it is that we set our consciousness for, we kind of did a surgery on our consciousness for the upcoming year. So, and it's a, such an incredible and beautiful opportunity we have that we, through study of Kabbalah, we understand that it's only through your consciousness that you can really change your life. It's through the workings of your consciousness, every situation that comes to you, every difficulty or obstacle or any situation that comes to us that causes us some sort of discomfort, any form of discomfort, or makes us feel a lack. Also, when we feel a lack of something, right? We want, we, we want a lot of things. And whenever we experience it, the huge blessing of people that study the wisdom of Kabbalah is that we understand that the main issue, you gotta bring it home and you gotta understand what do I do with my consciousness? What in my consciousness can be changed and transformed and improved in order for this situation, for my life in general, to be better? And this is, this is a huge, huge blessing and merit that we are given as people who study the wisdom of Kabbalah, that we're not stuck in the perception of life, that it's a series of events that happen to us, or that it's just something that happens randomly, you know, or that life is not fair, or we can be victims of circumstance or victims of life. We're not that. We are the creators of our life. We're the creators and manifestors of our life. And this is one of the main, main uh, installments of consciousness that we receive during those 22 days. And we're in very special time, the days after, we are still in the month of Libra. It's, it feels a little bit never ending, but we're still in the last bit and the last week of the month of Libra, this incredible, beautiful, powerful month. These are very actually positive days that we're in right now. We're kind of like, this is the days of kind of relaxation and you can kind of enjoy it, even though if, I don't know if you're in New York, but in New York, it's raining, it's a little gloomy, but um, in, in the energy of this time, the energy of these days is very positive, very optimistic. There's a lot of um, powerful capitalists that left the world uh, during this time. So they are supporting us tonight is a very special capitalist. His name is Rabbi Itzhak Levi of Berdichev, a huge Kabbalist from uh, Eastern Europe. And I personally feel a very strong connection to him. And uh, he's with us tonight. He's assisting us. You can ask him for help, for guidance, for assistance. And he, he said many, many beautiful things and teachings, but one of the best and most beautiful ones he said is, it's not how much of the prayer book that you go through, it's how much of the prayers that you say go through you. It's a beautiful quote, if you really understand it, that it has nothing to do with, um, you know, what you do just physically. It's more about internal and spiritual. So that's a short intro to make sure that we're all aware of who we are, what we're doing, how we can live the best life possible we can, because that's what we're meant to do. And uh, this week is very special. This week is called Bereshit, or beginning, in the beginning. And it's the first, 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 um, reading portion energy in the scroll of the Torah that we read on Saturday. This is, we went back, we rewound the whole scroll. We finished it uh, this past Saturday, last week. And this week we're starting it all over from the beginning. And this is the seed level. This is the seed level of the entire portion, the entire Torah. It's, you know, um, it starts with this portion. And there's probably I, I'm not sure if there's another portion that has as many secrets as this portion. I'm, I'm, I'm really not sure. Maybe Pinchas, maybe Truma, maybe there's a few other portions in the Zohar that contain as many secrets. 
almost all the secrets of 10 luminous emanations actually originate from these portions. And there is commentary, there's three books that are written by Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, the author of Azor, simply based on the first word of this week's portion, which is Bereshit. It's a six letter word, starts with, the first letter is letter Bet. Um, it's a very special letter. It's just secrets upon secrets and upon secrets. So the first one I wanted to share with you, it's, uh, it's there's a discussion in the Zohar that talks about why, um, that talks about the creator and the letters. And as the Rav used to teach, the letters are something very powerful. They're not just simply, um, le you know, language that we use like English or Russian or Portuguese or French or Chinese. It's not just simply a language and a way of communication. It's actually a way that we're connecting to energy, that we're connecting to something much more powerful than just um, just way to connect. It's not just what they use in Israel or what uh, Jews use to communicate. It's actually much more powerful. It's a way for us to connect to metaphysical energy. And that's why if, uh, if you know the right combinations of, for example, 72 names, the Anabekoach, the Zohar, they all use this Aleph Bet, this incredible tool. And when you, if you read the section of the Zohar in the prologue, there's a, and in another uh, section in the Zohar actually, it talks about this communication between the creator and these 22 uh, letters. So the, the Aleph Bet, it's called the Aleph Bet, the, the alphabet. And it has 22 letters. And um, there's a, this, a discussion between every single letter and the creator. Because the creator created these letters before actually creating us and the whole universe. And, and there's a discussion and the creator communicates and talks with each and every single one of them and asks them, why would you be the best letter to start the, to, to create the world with, that we're living in? And, and each letter, they actually go from the last one to the first one. And they each one come and say, you know, creator, use me because of so, so, and so. But every single one, the creator gives a reason why they shouldn't be. Until the letter bet comes, which once it comes and it tells the creator, creator, you should create the world with me because with me starts the letter of uh, the word of blessings, bracha. And the creator said, you know what, you're right. We should create the world with you because I want this world to be blessed. I want this world to be blessed, to contain blessings in it. And that's why the, the first, I'll, I'll try to show you, it's not very advanced graphics, but if you're seeing, this is the first letter of um, the first word of this week's reading. And that's how it looks. It looks almost like a house without, uh, with an entrance. And there's, again, there's lessons upon lessons upon lessons in, in about this letter. One of the, and that's what we're connecting to this week. So we're connecting to energy of blessings this week. We want to invite this energy of bracha, this energy of blessings into our life. Because ultimately what we constantly want to feel is that you're just blessed. You're blessed beyond belief. When you feel this feeling of blessings, you also awaken the sense of appreciation. You also appreciate every single thing in your life. You can always switch it and increase the amount of appreciation you have for it by feeling more and more appreciation. For example, Sunday yesterday wasn't an easy day for me. I was having a bit of a rough time. It was a little bit of a struggle. I wasn't feeling so well. It was, I had a very busy day after a week of spending living in the sukkah not sleeping at home. And uh, Sunday also was very busy. I had to be up early and basically nonstop all day. And as I'm doing everything, I'm like, wow, this is like, this is just what a pleasure day. Like just, you know, 
<laughs> I, I wish I could just stay home and relax. But I, you know, sometimes you have to do, right? We all know the word must. So I had a lot of uh, things that I had to do. And, but I wasn't feeling that well. And I'm like, okay, so what do I use? What do I use in this situation? How can I, how can I change it? Because obviously it can be changed. So by the way, that changes a lot of things right away. When, I, when you realize that, you know what? It's temporary. Don't, don't believe in it too much. Don't fall into the negativity too much. Don't fall into the chaos too much. Be uh, fluid. Be uh, flexible. Understand that this is, this is also changeable. It doesn't need to stay that way. That was very helpful. Afterwards, probably the biggest turning point was... Uh, when I started to appreciate things, when I started to say, you know what, I appreciate the fact that I am able to, that I'm breathing, that I'm alive, that I'm, you know, that I was doing whatever I was doing, I'm appreciating that I have it. And eventually the energy started to shift. And, you know, sometimes it's, by the way, it's, you know, there's a very powerful teaching in the Zohar that when things are not going right, quote unquote, when things are difficult, it might be the opponent putting a little bit more pressure on you because there's a lot of light to be revealed. So moments when you feel a lot of stress, a lot of pressure and feeling like, wow, like, can anything else go wrong? Like what's going on? Can anything else go wrong today? Understand that there is actually a tremendous amount of light to be revealed and the limiting system, the limiting beliefs are going to put extra effort, extra uh, resources to make sure you are going to avoid this opportunity. So this is a very, very, very big lesson. That the moment when you are about to do something very powerful in your life, when the moment when you are about to transform something, the moment when a lot of light is about to re be revealed, a difficulty will come right before. Okay, that's a very powerful lesson. You, you always want to remember that that the moment right before I am, you know, it could be anything, before I get an opportunity, before I meet somebody, before I um, go through a breakthrough in my life, the limiting system, the opponent, the Satan, is going to put extra effort to prevent you from getting that light, getting that next stage, getting that next opportunity. So the moment when you're going through a difficult time, the reason why we say what a pleasure is because you're about to experience something amazing. But the opponent is going to come and he's going to make a, give you an incredible menu, incredible list of options of why you should say this is not a good thing. This is not a good day. Why you should react more. Why you should get upset. Why you should feel more like a victim. Why you should, uh, uh, you know, blame. Uh, and be angry, upset, depressed, reactive, etc. Those moments are the times when you can reveal the most light in your life. Those moments. And even days when things are not going right, when you're not feeling right, etc. Those days you reveal 10 times more light when, in comparison to when things are just great. Also, remember that you always have this ability, you always have this opportunity to switch it to do a little bit of work, to do a little bit of internal digging and turn the whole situation around, turn the difficulty into a blessing. And this is what we're getting this week. We're installing in our consciousness, installing the ability to transform those difficult situations, those difficult obstacles into blessings that you will not be controlled by outside circumstances. No other person, no situation, no circumstance, no news, nothing in your life is going to shatter or uh, move your central balance, your ability to be in this understanding that I am, no matter what happens now, I am going to get whatever it is that I want to get. That's a very powerful consciousness. It's a very, very important consciousness to have. That no matter what happens in your life, the stronger you are, the more resilient, right? This is a very spiritual term, and we use it a lot in assistant in the, in the center. Your resilience or your ability to get back up after things didn't go your way. By nature, 
when things don't go our way, the ultimate reactivity, Satan, is going to tell you, be reactive, this is bad, this is not good, get even more reactive, get sad, get depressed, get angry, get frustrated, get et cetera and so forth. However, if you are able to be above it, if you're able to be connecting to the truth, to true reality, to the tree of life and the creator and the light, then you understand, okay, there is something, an incredible opportunity for me here. There is an incredible blessing hiding for me in this situation. And when you do that, it's, it's unbelievable. Again, today, from personal experience, I went through an amazing uh, work on myself. Did some, there was a situation that wasn't so nice and I had like 20, 15 minutes where I can sit with myself and communicate with myself. You know, there's, I heard an amazing quote. I love the quote that the most important conversation you will probably have, one of the most important ones, is the one you have with yourself. And it's very sobering, very sobering to have it at least like maybe once a week to just sit and to talk with yourself. Not that you don't have to do it audio, but you could also, but, but just to communicate with yourself and tell yourself, okay, so listen, listen, I would, if I would talk to myself, listen, Michael, like this just doesn't work. We need to do something, you know, just this doesn't work. This works amazing. Continue doing that. Invest more into this. Continue doing that makes you happy. This doesn't make you happy necessarily. Don't like, why are you doing it? Why are you doing it to yourself almost? What's the reason? You know, why are you self-sabotaging yourself? Because ultimately, remember, in the wisdom of Kabbalah, as much as you can think that it has something to do with restriction, with limitation, it's actually the opposite. When you restrict, when you limit instantaneous satisfaction, you're actually increasing long-term satisfaction, right? And it's a beautiful science of how you're discovering that because of your limiting beliefs, you are telling yourself that, oh, I need this light right now. I need this satisfaction right now. I need it now. I can't restrict it. But what you're actually doing is you're shrinking your vessel. And we, we're in the business of increasing vessels, having big vessels, having big desires, not limited, not just this is okay for me, this is enough. We want everything, right? In a way, this week is, is the wisdom of Kabbalah. You can say everything that, that the wisdom of Kabbalah encompasses is in this week, everything. Kabbalah 1, 2, 3, reincarnation, um, 10 luminous emanations, palm and face reading, astrology, um, the whole study of the weekly portions, everything is in this week. It's really, it's the seed level of everything. All the wisdom, the creation, the, four, the, the universe. So it's, it's such an incredible week. There's like really so much light. It's very hard to pick and, you know, kind of choose what do you want to talk about? And um, uh, first of all, obviously, like we said, everything that we just spoke about, but also the, the power of the Aleph Bet. This is, like I mentioned, this is very powerful. And that's why the Rav used to put such a big emphasis on it and such a big emphasis on using the tools, etc. because those codes connect you directly to the light, the right codes, right? The ones that we use in the, in the center, in the writings of the center, they directly connect you to the energy, to the force. Now, um, to read this portion is just incredible. It's just incredible, it's unbelievable. I was talking to somebody uh, today and they mentioned the, the whole idea of how there is uh, two parts to creation, even right. There's if you read the literal translation of this week's portion, it basically talks about creation of the universe, you know, creation of the stars, the sun, the plants, the fish, the animals, man, woman, etc. And um, um, and there's two parts to it, which is so interesting. First part it talks about the seven days, and the man and man is created already. And for some reason, it starts to talk about creation again, which obviously the Kabbalistic, Kabbalistic understanding is that there's two uh, worlds that we're living in. There is the spiritual, which was created first, and then there is a more a physical. And, uh, and to be understanding both of them at the same time, that there's two worlds that we're living in. Now, the power of Alephet, the word uh, Bereshit, we're also the word of uh, blessing, bracha, 
So what does it mean to be in a state of blessing? In the blessing is something that always has continuity. It's a simple definition of, um, of the word blessing, Kabbalistically. Obviously, feeling blessed, you know, there's a great song now, right? Feeling blessed, which is something that you always want to feel um, in your life, right? Which is such a state of appreciation that you don't, it's not just, you don't just feel appreciation, you feel blessed. You feel like there's just blessings upon you from showering you with blessings, right? And that's how we want to see our life. That's one of the things you can meditate on this week is that you're meditating to ask the creator to shower your entire being, your entire livelihood and your entire life with blessings, right? With blessings, bracha. It's a, it's a beautiful word in, in Hebrew. And it's a state that you want to be in. Imagine you wake up. This is how you're meant to wake up. If you're not waking up that way, try to, try to put yourself in that state that you're waking up and you're just feeling blessed. You're like, wow, what a blessing to be alive. What a blessing. The moment, if you are not, if any one of us, by the way, doesn't experience that, it's an amazing opportunity to do some uh, work on yourself, to work on yourself, to understand, okay, what's, what's preventing me from feeling the way the creator wants me to feel? Because there's this incredible, endless, almighty, all-powerful force that created the whole universe, created me, you, the the phone or the computer that you're using, everything, all the galaxies, all the animals, all the forces, all the atoms in this universe. And at the same time, this force is absolutely unconditionally in love with you and wants to take care of you. How would you feel that way? Just because you don't feel it doesn't mean it's not true. That's very important. Feelings are not always true. Just because I don't feel that if I wake up doesn't mean it's not happening. Okay, that's two different things. But that's how you want to wake up. That's the, that's the plank, right? That's why some people use uh, uh, meditation. Amazing way to do that. Some people use exercise. Amazing way, right? You put yourself in that state. You want to feel it. So you do whatever it is that helps you be in that state. But you want to make sure that you get to that state early in the morning, that your day is spent in that consciousness. It's not spent in the consciousness of, you know, going through mud or something, you know, you feel, you want to feel that you are blessed. So this week, the creator is kind of opening those gates of blessings for our life, opening all those opportunities, all that energy to shower our life, our entire universe, our being with the energy of blessings. Thank you, Greg. So, um, so that's one, that's one. And also we were kind of, closing this 22 day process, right? This 22 day process, we, I mean, I, whoever participated in the connections that we had in the center, I, we were just talking also that we are just so lucky that we were able to do it. And, and thank God, nobody, we, you know, we followed all the rules and stuff. So nobody got anything from it negative, I mean. And the fact that we were able to do it and that people were able to come and participate, people were able to watch the streaming, unbelievable. I mean, it just, it just shows what an incredible um, force the center is for this world. You know, I'm sure we did so much for this world that in these 22 days that we can't even imagine. And, um, I heard a very beautiful teaching that one of the students actually shared that he was talking to the Rav during the holiday of Sukkot, which was last week. And uh, he was saying, um, the Rav was saying, you know, I'm, I, I am meditating that all this energy that we're gathering right now, we are sending it out to the whole world. Because one of the connections in holiday of Sukkot, you meditate to feed um, every single human being on this earth that is not connected to spirituality, they're dependent on us. They're dependent on people that are connected to spirituality. So the Rav said that, you know what, I'm not, I'm not going into the details necessarily. And like thinking that, oh, I'm sending this light directly to uh, China, right? Or something like that. I'm, I know that this energy is gonna go to the world and create miracles and blessings for the whole world, no matter what. Doesn't matter, I feel it, I don't feel it, I know where it goes, I don't know where it goes. It makes no difference. I need to understand that that's what's happening. And that is what's happening. And the Ross said, you know, I, you, sometimes you don't wanna go into too many details. You want to understand that things are just happening and this is how it is. So 
that that's also what you want to think sometimes you know that you are whatever it is that i'm doing to appreciate yourself that i am actually creating so much light for this whole world for this whole universe it's really uh really amazing so we're connecting to this word there sheet um that Rabbi Shimon wrote 70 commentaries just on the first word of this week's portion, which is also the first word of the whole scroll of the Torah. And we know the Torah is the physical aspect of spirituality of Kabbalah, and the wisdom of Kabbalah and the Zohar are the soul, are the true understandings, right? If you, literally, if you read it literally, uh, the first, you know, even there's a beautiful teaching from a Kabbalist that the first letter of the scroll is the letter Bet, like you mentioned, the last letter is the letter Lamed. If you read it di directly, it becomes Bal, which means confusion and kind of total unclarity, which is what happens when you read the scroll directly and literally. However, if you look at it backwards, Lamed Bet, that comes heart, Lev. So if you practice the wisdom of Kabbalah and don't look at things directly, then you connect to the heart, to the soul of the whole teachings. And basically, you know, it's very interesting that, um, that we are given, that the world, it, it, it's, it's that there's these laws in the universe. We also want to understand that actually the laws that exist in the universe if you want to think about it in a little bit of an abstract way, it's because they exist. Like the reason why I feel good when I give is because that's the law of the universe. So if I don't give, if I don't have a consciousness of giving, then I'm not going to have as much energy. This is just the law of the universe. Right? You, it doesn't matter. You believe in it. You don't believe in it. You can do whatever it is that you want. This is the law of this universe. However, the creator is actually beyond all these laws. These laws are actually something that, that is for us. Just like the wisdom of Kabbalah. What do you study in the wisdom of Kabbalah? This is very important. In the wisdom of Kabbalah, you don't study the creator. You don't study the light. The light is endless. It's not something that we can easily grasp. What we do study is the vessel. It's how the vessel operates. All the study of Kabbalah, everything that you've ever learned, is how the vessel and different aspects of the vessel operate, but not the creator. The creator is an endless force of giving. That's all we know about him. Endless force of giving, unconditional love. That's the true essence of the creator. In the wisdom of Kabbalah, what you are learning is how the vessel operates. You're actually learning how you operate. The laws that govern you and your consciousness. Okay? It's not something out there, not the creator... No, he, he has absolutely zero needs. If you believe that he needs something, if he needs something from you, if he uh, uh, you know, needs uh, uh, gifts, change from you, that's, you're, you're, you're not in the right place. You're lost. If a person thinks that the creator is expecting something from us, he, he, wants, he does want us to be fulfilled. That does he want. That, that's his, one of his kind of like like a parent to a child, right? When, when a parent has a child, normally the parent does anything possible to make the child happy, right? To make the child successful, to make the child um, grow, connect, be happy, etc. And there's nothing better than to see your child being happy, right? Same way with the creator. That's, that's kind of the emotion or kind of what the creator experiences. But at the same time, creator also knows that no matter what it is that you do, it, does, it, it makes zero difference. You cannot do anything in this world that's going to prevent us from reaching the final destination. There's nothing. There's, it's, it's actually a form of ego when you think that you've done something negative or bad. You cannot do anything. You cannot do anything in this world that's going to make the destiny of the whole world go another way. Impossible. Okay, so maybe a minute or 30 seconds to process. If you want to think about it, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. So, energy of blessings, right? This is one thing you want to focus on. This week, you're blessing. You're blessing it. You're blessing everything. You're blessing your reactivity. You're blessing your positivity you're blessing everything the beautiful thing about blessing is why do we say blessing your negativity because ultimately 
your reactivity, your negative side, your opponent, your limiting beliefs, whatever it is, however it is that you want to call it, is what will help you connect to the creator, right? This is ultimately why it was created. This is the reason why it was um, made, is that it will help you uh, connect to the light force. Now, when you are injecting blessings, even into your negativity, you're blessing your negativity. That means you're blessing it, that it will come and do its job better and will actually help you and push you to the right place faster. And, uh, and you will be able to overcome it uh, faster as well. Okay, hold on one second, we have a question. So from Greg, how does how, does, how you feel about your... Amazing question, great question. I'm gonna, it, everyone can see it, but I'll read it. How does how you feel about your actions play into your karma? Amazing, right, amazing question. Because feelings are very important. And, and uh, also the opponent is very much into how we feel. He wants to, he wants to limit, he, his, one of his main jobs is to make you feel bad, right? And also from this week's portion, as you understand, the Adam and Eve story is in this week's portion, right? So the whole story of blaming and pointing fingers and, uh, and saying whose fault it is, is in this week's portion. And also, um, and also a very important lesson based on that comes from uh, one of the Kabbalists and he, uh, from the Jose of Lublin. And he says uh, that, you know, the creator doesn't get upset. Right? The creator doesn't get upset, he doesn't need to get even, he's not resentful, he's not uh, revengeful, he doesn't have any of those things. So when Adam and Eve, when they ate from the tree, ate, you know, obviously they didn't eat, if you, uh, I'll, I'll share with you what it means from 10 Luminous Emanations, it's a beautiful understanding and the true understanding of what really happens there. But um, when the incident happened. So basically what, what started to happen is that quote unquote, I really, I, I, I have to use the word snake, but obviously it wasn't a snake. It was the opponent. He uh, comes to Eve, the first woman, and he tells her, why don't you eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil? You know, nobody dies from it. Don't worry. Nothing is going to happen to you. You're going to be great. Don't worry. Just eat it. It's very delicious. It's very tasty. Go for it. So Eve falls for it. And she tries it. And she's like, wow, this is delicious. This is amazing. Uh, she likes it. She goes to Adam, her soulmate. And she's like, I ate. Nothing happened. I think it's okay. <laughs> I think it's good to go. So Adam also eats. Nothing happens. They actually experience an amazing and incredible uh, force of pleasure. One of the biggest pleasures that they experienced, that humanity ever experienced, was at that moment. And they're like, nothing happened. A little bit of time goes by, and uh, and then all of a sudden the creator starts to look for Adam, and he says, "Adam, where are you?" Side note: There's an incredible uh, uh, teaching from uh, the Kabbalist Ben Nishai. When he was four years old, he was able to decipher that if you take the first letter of uh, the word of the sentence, "Where Adam? Where are you?" It actually reads. I know all secrets, so don't hide from me. I know all secrets. And he, the creator looks for Adam and he's like, oh, you ate. <laughs> how do you, how, what was the way the creator, you know, like he needed to know, he obviously knew it. He set it all up that it will happen, obviously, because that's what's gonna bring us into where we need to go. He knew that they ate, obviously, but he tells him, did you eat from the apple? And Adam says, yes but she made me and he points to Eve. And Eve is like, ah, yes, but the snake made me and also points to the, um, to the snake. So they start to blame. This is one of the most key features in reactivity is that you, we tend to blame, right? Blaming is lose-lose situation. Blaming is lose-lose situation, okay? Remember that. So the creator um, finds out, they all know, the creator is ready to forgive them right away. The creator is like, big deal. I don't care. Who cares? Big deal. You know, what did start to, what did prevent them from staying in the garden, in the um, garden of Eden? 
their feeling of guilt. Their feeling of guilt is what actually forced them out, which is unbelievable. So the feeling, if you do something reactive and you feel whatever it is that you feel after doing that, you actually lose in that moment more than you ever will by doing anything. Because then you're saying that, oh, I'm bad. I'm kind of like labeling myself. I am bad. I did something bad. I did something horrible. I did something blah, blah, blah. When you do that, you're actually disconnecting much more than anything you could ever do physically. That feeling and connecting it and entertaining it and growing it is actually more uh, harmful to us than whatever action is, whatever action you might have done. So whenever you feel, that's why, that's why I said you want to start your day with this feeling of blessings, with this feeling of blessing, feeling of forgiveness to yourself, feeling that I love myself, no matter what, love myself from start to finish, from everything that I've done. If you want to reach a, a true state of spirituality, you're going to come to a moment when you're going to understand that every single negative event, every single negative action you've ever done was only to help you to get to where you need to be. That's the ultimate kind of um, ultimate guru status, right? If you want to be in a status of guru, you want to understand that whatever it is that I've done was only good. It only helped me come to where I am right now. So think about it. Maybe if you don't feel it that way, at least have that as a, as a, have it as a benchmark that this is what I'm reaching towards. I'm reaching towards this consciousness. I'm reading towards that understanding that it doesn't matter what I do, what I did, everything is good. Everything is unified. Why do people go and experience certain uh, meditations and medicine, et cetera? Because that's, what, that's the state that you're getting at you, towards too. But you want to have it as a benchmark. You want to understand where it is that I'm going for. Where am I reaching? That every single day of my life, I can actually get closer to the state of unity, of Yehidao, so it's the highest level of the soul that we have. Complete understanding of oneness and love. That's very important because that's the energy of the creator. So hope that answers your question. Again, that's why feeling of feeling blood, that's why some Kabbalists, for example, in Eastern Europe, and a lot of Kabbalists would do things that kind of would like physically make them feel good. You know, that's why, that's why taking care of your body is very important, right? You want to feel it also. There shouldn't be reason why you don't feel good any moment. Like you want to feel ecstatic all the time. You want to feel this great. That's why it's important to make sure you eat right, you live healthy, etc. that you don't create, you know, unnecessary blockages for, um, for your consciousness. If I'm eating fast food every single day. Sometimes it's fine. It's, we're not talking about, you know, completely avoiding anything, but sometimes it's fine to treat yourself. But if I'm constantly eating, um, you know, heavy metals, etc., you're going to limit yourself. So, and by the way, the same thing happens at the golden calf. The same thing that when the Israelites created the golden calf, the Jose Rubin said, the creator was like, guys, I forgive you. It's okay. Everyone makes a mistake. Don't worry about it. But the Israelites, what did we do? We did something so bad. What are we going to do now? What are we going to do? We're guilty. So they brought it onto themselves. That's what you want to, your kind of goal every day is I want to feel blessed. I want to feel so blessed. I'm so blessed. You are. You're not like, you're not faking it. It's not like you're making something up. You're blessed. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if, God forbid, somebody's stuck in a, kidnapped situation right now somewhere in the end of the world and has no way out they're also blessed right now because the world was created with energy of blessings the creator said i'm going to create this the dna of this world is energy of blessings so the moment i connect to blessings i activate the feeling of blessing i'm really connecting to my true dna i'm awakening you understand so that's why this sincere whatever it is that gets you there obviously not harming yourself but whatever, in whatever healthy way it is for you to get to that state of feeling blessed, that should definitely be uh, an important to do thing of every single day of your life. For me, I know I, when I eat healthy, when I exercise and when I meditate and when I connect to the Zohar, when I do uh, in the morning, that changes my day. Boom. So that's what I do. Right? 
obviously, the more I do it, the faster I can get to it, right? The faster, the more spirituality you do, the faster your resilience is, right? But that's the goal. That's, that's what you want to go after. You want to feel blessed because then, only then, you're really connected to the truth. Then you are really, really, really connected to the truth. Can you imagine that the moment you don't feel blessed, you're just disconnected from reality? You're not really connected to, to reality. It's unbelievable, okay? Really powerful lesson. Very, very powerful. Now, there's again, there's so many lessons in this week's portion. I, it's like, it's, I mean, a year is, is not enough to cover the first few. But there's some of the beautiful ones that come to us from Rav Ashlag that I want you to understand. And it's also, it's a little bit of an advanced consciousness, but it's also beautiful to have. And I'm sure, you, hopefully you heard it before, but it's very, very beautiful. And it's the whole understanding of um, the creation of a vessel, because that's what really happens in this week's portion. Adam, Eve, and Snake are all uh, different variations of the vessel, different forms and, and, and levels of the vessel. And if you know there's four levels of the vessel, right? There is uh, level uh, phase one, two, three, and four, very simple. Pina Aleph, Bet, Gimel, and Dalet. In Hebrew, it's just letters for one, two, three. And um, the first level of the vessel is the unconscious, is everything is satisfied for you, but you don't even know about it. Like, for example, uh, bodily functions, like uh, thank God our heart, our internal organs, they work without our direct command, right? It's not like my hand or my mouth that need to be, that my brain needs to direct it to move, diaphragm, etc. All these processes that are just happening completely automatically, right? You have no direct awareness of it. So that's Pina, da, pina Aleph. It's an unaware desire, right? Like the Rav used to say, unless your uh, tooth hurts, you're not going to really appreciate that you don't have the toothache, right? Which is very true. So, um, so that's level one. Level two is when you start to understand, when you're like, imagine learning that you have all these processes, you're like, oh my God, that's amazing. Now, they all have much, obviously, a lot more, right? Than just that simple understanding. And uh, level two, level two of desire is you're so appreciative that you want to share. Imagine uh, with the best one, the best and my favorite example is winning the lottery. Imagine you won the lottery, you won half a billion dollars. You are not going to care if your worst enemy comes to you and tries to slap you. You're going to be like, slap me all you want. I don't care. I just won the lottery. You can do whatever it is that you want. So that's an understanding, the feeling of Pina uh, death. Now, the third level of vessel is, is when it starts, to, it starts to be like, oh, okay, so how do, I also, um, uh, how do I also earn and have more of it? I actually want more of that. I actually want, you know, because it's very interesting, but the moment the vessel started to have a desire to share, it's actually a little bit of a disconnection from the creator because the creator just wants to give it light. And once the, once the vessel was like, oh, I want to share, it started to have an eye. It started to kind of have an ego at that moment. So it actually disconnected it from the creator a little bit more. The third level is that the light started to leave. You start to share this light and start to leave you a little bit. Now, the snake actually represents the fourth level of desire, Pina Dalit. And this is what we're actually going for. We actually, in the process, in the big picture, Tikkun karma of the world and of humanity is we are transforming our most strongest levels of desire or actually the snake. The snake is actually part of us. It's not something outside of us. It's not something, it's not something out there. It's not a force out there. It's a consciousness. It's our limiting beliefs, Satan, etc. But it's always a part of us. And our job is to transform it. So what happened? What did the snake tell Eve to do? What did, it, what did it really do Kabbalistically, right? We want to look at it as the ultimate Kabbalistic perspective. What the snake said to do is receive this pleasure, 
because what they experience through biting of an apple, again, it's not, a, it's not necessarily an apple. Kabbalists say it was, um, it could have been wine, it could have been wheat, uh, it could have been uh, grapes, uh, even figs, or intercourse. These are ways of receiving fulfillment and pleasure, right? Whenever we um, experience, first of all, eating and intercourse is the highest level of fulfillment that we can receive physically in this world. Now, what the snake told Eve to do is receive this pleasure and don't have any thoughts of sharing. Forget about sharing it with anyone. Forget about thinking about the light. Forget about thinking about anyone outside of you. Enjoy it 100% all to yourself. There's no need to share. And she did. And it actually expanded her vessel, expanded her desire. Her desire was actually on the level of angels before that. And she was actually not able to manifest and crave as much light. Only after she did, after she tasted it, only after that, she actually went down into the levels of desires, meaning increased her desire. Before that, her level, both of their levels was very low. That's why they were quote unquote naked, like angels. Angels are naked. They don't necessarily wear clothes. Because they don't need to. Because all their energy is about sharing. Whenever you feel an energy of, you know, what did they start to feel? Why did they start to wear clothes all of a sudden? They start to feel shame, right? Why, why all of a sudden you feel shame now if you were naked all the time before? What, what, how, is it, how does it make any sense? It's because they started to receive a much higher degree of light and they were not in the state of sharing it at all. They were like, I just want it all for me. I'm not including anything else. I'm not, I'm not giving this energy to anyone. I'm just re receiving it all for me. It's all mine. So what the snake was telling him to do was actually very simply take all this light, take all this pleasure and just enjoy it all to yourself. Don't have anyone else in mind. Don't think of anyone else. Just you. That's all, that's all that matters. Don't think about anyone else. And what did they, actually another beautiful teaching is, what did they do? They took one bite, which was actually no problem at all. They were able to restrict it. Side note, a lesson. Every time you try something for the first time, it automatically has a restriction or a sharing aspect in it. It's only all the times you try afterwards that it, the, the proactive sharing and restriction needs to come directly from you. Obviously, if you study the wisdom of Kabbalah, from everyone, but we're the only ones that actually know this. So a huge lesson from this week's portion, another one, is that one of the main reasons why we're here is we need to learn how I can share any kind of fulfillment that I'm receiving with other people. How can I share... Uh, the food that I'm eating, make sure you share it with somebody else. The money that you're getting, make sure that you share it with somebody else. The clothing that you have, make sure you share it with somebody else. The, the house that you have, make sure it's shared. Basically teaching the vessel that yes, it's fine to receive all the light. It's fine to have all the money, all the pleasures, all the houses, all the intimacy in the world. Have all of it. Have it. That's what you're meant for have more and more and more but make sure that there's an aspect of sharing it make sure that if you have a house it's taught to have guests make sure that when you are eating you're thinking about somebody else you're thinking that you know what i'm giving somebody else also i'm not finishing maybe the whole plate i'm leaving a little bit left you know like the rab would always say leave a little bit on your plate for the opponent don't finish the whole plate I'm having intimacy, I'm thinking about uh, my partner. Not just about myself, but I'm thinking about my partner. Uh, business, it serves me and it also serves something bigger than me. Uh, friends, I am giving to my friends and I'm a friend as much as they are to me or even more. I'm a friend to other people, not just me. For a company I work for, I make sure that I'm receiving, but I'm also going a little bit even more to contribute to the cause of what I'm working for. Basically expanding yourself and thinking much more than just me, me, me right now. So the energy of a snake is an uncorrected fourth vessel. 
which is receiving everything just for me with no aspect of sharing. If the moment, by the way, something very beautiful that Rabbi Yitzhak Luria says that every day actually you should think that I am performing the tikkun, the elevation, the karma of Adam and Eve, because we are all aspects, different kind of aspects of Adam and Eve. By the way, people that are more uh, gifted with their hands, it actually says that they, they probably came from the hands of Adam. The people that, you know, came from, it, it, there's actually a whole study, there's in Rabbi Takluria, it gives directions. For example, if somebody um, is a good speaker, they might have come from the mouth of Adam. If somebody is able to listen, they might have come from ears. If somebody has very, uh, is, uh, you know, very heartfelt person. They might have come from the heart. Uh, if they're very intelligent, they come from the head, etc. So it's very interesting to uh, be able to identify what gifts you have and where you are coming from, Adam. And also, um, yeah. So just to understand that every single day that I'm doing my spiritual work, I'm not just doing my spiritual work, but I'm doing the spiritual work of Adam and Eve. That's what I'm really, that's what I'm also doing at the same time, both at the same time, not just limited to me. So, this is all, by the way, thanks to Rav Ashlag. We wouldn't have any of this teaching, especially about the phases, if we didn't have Rav Ashlag, right? A simple way to understand the phases, it's not an easy subject, by the way. Don't worry about it. It's not very clear, but with the building of a building, when you build a building. For example, the thought, the spark that comes to you, I should build a building. That's phase one. That's chokhmah. All the moments, it's kind of almost like a sperma, uh, spermatozoid, right? When it enters the egg, it's like a flash. By the way, it's a beautiful teaching, a beautiful discovery it happened a while ago, but scientists discovered that the moment the spermatozoid enters the egg, there's a flash of light. And the brighter the flash, the more success of, uh, uh, of the pregnancy that will happen, which is crazy, right? There's a chemical reaction that causes the egg to light up. The moment the spermatozoid enters the egg and it starts to develop, that's phase two. Or also when you are in your head, you got an idea, I'm going to build a building and you start to think about it and you start to go, I want to, oh, it should be this color, it should be this tall, it should have this, it should have this, 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 that. So the thinking process is phase two also. The moment you start getting quote unquote, messy or dirty, you're manifesting it, you're starting to draw, do the, um, the blueprint, the uh, contacting all the different parts of um, resources that you need, the concrete, the wood, whatever it is, that's phase three. Phase four is the whole building. And that's where the biggest, one of the biggest restrictions comes in, is once the whole building is set, are you gonna have a full ego of pride and say, I did that? That's all mine. I accomplished it. Look at what I have done. That's phase four. That's uncorrected phase four. The moment you are done, you should say, wow, look at what the creator helped me do. Look at what the creator helped me do. This is incredible. This is incredible. This is, look at what the creator helped me do. Look at how it's going to serve other people. Look how it's going to serve society. I'm going to make sure it serves society. I'm going to make sure it serves a positive force, positive uh, uh, purpose. So the moment you start to understand that you cannot have ownership of any talent or anything that you have created, that it wasn't you that did it, that's when you're correcting also phase four, the four, four phase of desire. Also, like, uh, you know, it's incredible. I was listening. Anytime I listen to the Rav, the Rav never said, I have done. Look what I have done. Look what I have accomplished. Look, what, look at all this. Look at the center. The Rav never said, I. And the Rav was Leo. Probably one of the, one of the most prideful signs there is. Leos, well, that's the big, biggest obstacle. They're, they're very connected to, I'm not going to go into it now, but they're very, very uh, prideful. And everything they create, even if they don't say it inside, they're like, I did that. Look at this. Look at what I have accomplished. 
that's their consciousness and that's one of the biggest obstacles that they can put in front of themselves is is the thinking that look at what i have accomplished it doesn't necessarily need to come out of your mouth you shouldn't it shouldn't be even the thought not that it shouldn't be just an obstacle you're just creating more and more obstacles for yourself what you should think is look at what the creator helped me do wow look at look at what the creator did that's more that's much more positive and um yeah, so the Rav never said that. It's unbelievable. It's incredible. I was listening to someone, someone's in another lecture I was listening, and the person was saying, look what I have done. I will need to do this. I, 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 I. And I was just like, it's just something so not uh, right, not kosher about it. And I'm like, you know what? The Rav never said it. The Rav never said, I built the center. The Rav never said, I did this. I did that. I did that. And there was no ego. There was no ownership. There's total humbleness and understanding that it all comes from the Creator. And uh, so that's, that's really, by the way, it's a, it's a good test of how much desire you have uh, of, of something is how much effort you put into it, right? Just to be clear, but we're also supposed to, you, you, to add on to the feeling of blessing. So first you want to be very clear this week, meditate that you want to feel blessed you want to feel blessed from the morning to dawn and you want to once you start to go down you want to think okay i'm blessed i want to be in a state of blessing that's that's who people want to be next to people don't want to be in a, next to people that are going through a hard time sometimes for sure you're going through a hard time reach out for help don't just be prideful and just say oh everything's great no if you need help ask for it but you want to first of all feel blessed and also have a bigger desire. How can I manifest more today? How can I make manifest more light? How can I cause more change in this world? How can I transform more today? How can I grow more today? How can I be greater today than I was yesterday? How can I have, you know, bring more positivity to this world than yesterday? How can I be better? You know, these desires, these like positive forces and desires. That's also something that should be uh, on top of our... Uh, list of what you want to have as a top priority of every single day feeling blessed and also feeling how i can be bigger how can there can be more not limiting so very powerful week such a powerful week just just incredible incredible week to feel this blessing to ask really if i would ask the creator and we should pray and ask the creator this i i think i mentioned it but also on um during the holidays there were some situations in my life that with all the meditations all the modalities i know i didn't feel like there was any change that i'm causing to certain relationships and etc and and i just started to pray to the creator and i said creator i need you I, I need you to help me with this help me with i don't know what to do i don't know what to do and i just started praying creator help me help me. i need light in this i need light in this and just sending more and more and more light into the situation and all of a sudden like almost like a rock it started to open up and crack and open and you know opened up my incredible experience i kind of want to remember it every single day not to forget to ask the creator for help so you want to ask the creator to feel blessed, to feel whatever it is that you need to accomplish, and to, and to ask the creator to give you more, to give you more clarity, more understanding, more consciousness, more impact on the world. We don't just want to be receivers, right? Every single one of us has been through Kabbalah one, two, three. I want to think how I can make more impact in the world. It, it, it could just be just that thought, but I want to think about it every single day. How can I make more impact on my world, on the surroundings, on the people that I know. Just ask a question. You don't necessarily need to always find the answer. Questions are much more powerful than answers. Good questions, much more powerful. How does it get any better? Very powerful question. How can I cause more change in the world in a positive way? That's a great question. How can I be more connected to the light? That's a great question. How can I be greater today than I was yesterday? Amazing question. Be more in questions. Don't, especially in the morning also, it's a great way to wake up. Don't be in a state of setting, of answers, of stagnation, of I, I know or something like that. That's, that's a limiting, losing uh, state. Be in a state of questions. Thank you for joining. We can do a short meditation, whoever wants, or if you have questions, feel free to ask. But it's always powerful to end with a meditation. We want to bring this energy to our subconscious. 
not just on a conscious level. So we will do a quick meditation to connect to energy of blessings, connecting to energy of infinite desires. And you want to be very present in yourself. You want to close your eyes, be present in your body, feel your body. And you want to connect to the energy of a creator. The creator is energy of unconditional love, energy of blessings. You want to, again, see energy coming from our entire body, form a beautiful ball of light above our body. Pretend that you are in this ball of light and start ascending and traveling through the entire universe, traveling through layers of lights come into a very bright layer of light, a golden layer of light, a jello-like layer of light, and finally to the iridescent, sparkling energy of the creator, like a pearl-like energy. And you want to blend and melt into this light, into this creative force, become one with it. And we want to connect to the letter Bet, the letter for blessing, so if you want to feel that you are always blessed, filled with blessings, every single attribute of your self, of your body, of your consciousness, everything that belongs to you will be filled with energy of blessings, say yes. And you want to kind of envision yourself being surrounded by this light of blessings, light of prosperity, abundance, and increasing energy of multiplication of the positive, increase of the positive. But things are only getting better. And at the same time, we want to awaken the consciousness of growth, the consciousness not to settle for what we have, what it is, what we accomplished, but to think of what we, what else we can do. How can I grow? How can I be better? How can I be greater? How can I have more joy, more compassion, more fun, more excitement, more positive adventures in my life? So to learn to ask these questions on a daily basis. If you want that, say yes. And we want to also extend and send this light and energy to the entire universe, to the entire world. To all the people, to our loved ones, to everyone in our life. To people that might be causing you uh, problems or obstacles also. Send unconditional love to them. It's the ultimate cure. And before you open your eyes, just rinse yourself in the light, fill yourself up with it again, and you're ready to open your eyes. Okay, all right, thank you everyone for joining. I can, one second.